Hey everyone, Rob here from Octagon and welcome to our first Divi UI challenge for 2017. It's actually been probably about a month and a month and a bit since our last uh, challenge, so um, quite looking forward to this. What you see on your screen right now is what we'll be building. It's a pretty cool looking uh, subscribe section, I guess you would call it, or you could even have it as a, a standalone page. So it could be a, um, a bit of a splash page or a landing page for someone subscribing to your newsletter. Uh, got a pretty cool space theme going on here. So let's jump straight into it and let's build this thing out. Cool, so I've created a new page, I've just called it subscribe page and I'm using the front end builder as usual. And we, as we land here, we get our default section. And first thing we do is we're going to add the image, this galaxy, this bubble galaxy, I think it is, uh, background. Now I got this image from unsplash.com. Now if you haven't discovered it yet, it's amazing place to get photos for. Um, and if you have discovered it, you'll know what I mean when I say it's amazing. So that's where I got this one from. I um, resized the image as well. Let's just have a look. I'll show you what I mean. Resized it down to 1920 by 1280. 1920 is pretty big. You probably don't need it to be that big. Um, you can probably get away with 1280 wide. 1920 is nice and big though, nice and crisp. Compressed it down to 250 which is kilobytes, which is a little bigger than I'd usually like to go, but we can roll with that for now. So we got that as our background image. We're going to add a two column row. Going to add a text module, light, center, and we're going to add some text. Let me remind myself what we're adding. It's time to find your place in the universe. Deep. Your place. Now, if that's not a call to action, I don't know what is. This middle line, find your place. We're going to create that as a set that as a heading one. Cool. Jump over to the design tab. Header font, able, all caps. Uh, we won't make it bold. The font size, we're going to bring it right up to 70, I think is what I had. Text color defaults to white, so we can leave it there. Spacing and line height, we can leave. Um, text font, we're going to set to able as well. I'm also going to get all caps, and we are going to make that bold. And we'll bump that up to 16 pixels. Color's good, letter spacing, line height's good, background color, leave. Everything else is good. Let's leave that for now. Second module is the email opt in module. Um, now, a good thing with the, I've noticed with the Divi Builder is that even if you haven't yet connected your newsletter service provider, you know, like MailChimp, you can still build. You know, you can still um, see what you're making, but the front end won't render the form. Um, so the actual front end of the website um, won't render the form until you've connected your service provider. I have connected mine. I've connected MailChimp, so it will show either way, but it's good to know that. So I'm just going to select my Octagon list. Um, from MailChimp for now, title, what do we call it? Begin your journey. Sorry if I'm toggling back and forth between screens quickly. Hopefully you're following along. Okay, begin your journey, button text, let's go launch. Use background color, yes, we're gonna set it to white. Text color, dark, just so we can see what we're doing. Uh, orientation left is good. We're not, not gonna, we're not going to add any body content or copy. Leave that blank. Cool design. Form filled background color. Nice light gray. Text color. Oops. There we go. Just that dark gray. Focused background color. That same light gray text color. Now we've got a couple of colors we're working with here. A pink and a blue. We'll grab the pink for our focus. Now focus means that when the field or the input um, is active or selected like so, that means what, it, uh, that's what um, focus means. Um, so I've set it to, to pink here. I, 
I, I, ju I literally just used my finger to point at the screen and I realized you wouldn't be able to see that. Um, so I'm using the pink for the focus text color and that's what gives me the pink text when I start typing. Uh, focus border, yes. Border color, whoops. Oh, pink again, pinky purple I should say. Header fonts, able. All caps, bold, 16. Header text color, uh, I'm gonna use the blue for that. Begin your journey. Had a lot of spacing, line heights, okay. Body font able. That should just switch over the button. It does. Uh, that's fine at 14. Let me just check something. Yeah, I've noticed that it changes the, uh, the spacing between the fields. Interesting. I'd have to dig around and see exactly why, that, why that's happening. Body text color will leave letter spacing line height gives us, we'll just drop that to zero just because it reduces the space between our header and the first uh, field. Border, um, no. Custom margin, yes. I just want to give it a bit more space to breathe. Uh, sorry, not custom margin, custom padding. So I'm just going to put 40 pixels. And then on the outside, Use custom styles for button, yes. Button text size, 20, we'll leave it at that. Color white, I should say text color white. Um, background color, our blue. Border width two is fine. Button border color, our blue again. Border radius, whoops, six. Button font. Uh, it's a default, it should be able already because it will default to uh, the body font which we selected earlier. Um, we are adding an icon, it defaults to yes but we'll add yes. Um, and that little arrow, that, look, that looks good, that looks good, we'll go with that. Um, everything else we can leave to the default. All right, so we're getting close to having done everything with the base settings available to us in the Divi Builder. Uh, one more thing I'll quickly do on the row is in column one, we're just gonna add some padding at the top. Just 100 should put that in the middle for us. Uh, we'll also increase the padding. 130 looks good on this section, top and bottom, just to one third. Oh dear, oh dear, where are we? Doing it again. There we go. Cool. Okay, I think we've done everything in terms of the what the settings allow us to do. So now we're going to write some some custom CSS. So let's jump over to our email opt-in module. Look at CSS. First one's easy. Uh, main main element. We're going to go border. Radius six pixels, not 60. Six is good. All right, we also are going to go box shadow. So this is that little generator that we always use, which is pretty cool. Visitor length is zero, vertical length is zero. And now, as I always say, it's good to actually know what this means and what you're writing, um, but once you know, nothing hurts to have it generated for you because it can be a little tedious when you have to write out you know three four times to make it cross browser compatible blah 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 uh, background color I want to grab the pink no I don't I want to put on the shadow color there we go and I'll drop that to point Five, so that's 50% opacity. Let's just grab that back over here and on the main element again, we're just going to paste that in there. Nice. Okay, while we're on that generator, I'm going to grab the blue back here again. I'm going to change the shadow color to the blue now. 
I'm going to reduce the blur radius from 50 to 25. And I'll reduce the opacity down to 3, 0.3 I should say. So copy that, back over here, back down to newsletter button. Might change that to 0.5. What's that look like? Sure, that looks fine. Um, cool, let's save that. That's everything for our email opt-in as far as the custom CSS goes. So we're just gonna do a little bit on um, the text module. Just gonna do something I missed earlier, which was for the header font, I actually have it set to bold and italic like that. Um, cool, all right, so what we're gonna do on text settings, on the text module for custom CSS, is you're gonna put this cross in the background. Uh, this is a bit of fun, this one, so hopefully you can follow along. We're gonna use both before and after pseudo elements for CSS, and we're going to create a HTML element, block element, that is gonna sit behind them, and we're gonna transform it and rotate it by 45 degrees, uh, and the second by 135 degrees. Uh, if that made sense to you, great. If it didn't, that's fine. You can follow along and see what I do. So first thing we're gonna do is um, go display, actually no, first of all we'll go content. And we're gonna to put two uh, quotation marks. So the content for our, our, our HTML block is, is, is empty. It's, it's the content is between those two quotation marks. So we're having nothing. Uh, display block. Position absolute uh, with 300 pixels height, um, two pixels background color. So we should see something appear now. As of yet, we haven't seen anything. There it is. Uh, so we're going to go. So I'm going to go white, but I'm actually going to give it a bit of opacity. So instead of running a hex code, we're going to go RG. B A uh, two four four two four four two four four uh, zero point five. There we go. So that's white. That fifty percent opacity, and there is our HTML element that is sitting in the background. But now we have to get it where we want. So first thing we're going to do is going to go left. So we're going to because of its position, absolutely, we can tell that we we can tell it that we want it to be positioned from the left hand side of the parent element, and the parent element is the text module. We want it to be positioned 50%. But then we want to give it a margin left of minus 150 pixels and 150 pixels because that is halfway well, half its width. Now I'll briefly explain what we did. We moved it 50%, of, we moved it to the, we moved the starting position of the element to the middle of the container, and then we moved it left by 50% of the size of the element, which is how we get it to be positioned exactly in the middle. Now we're gonna do the same for the top. So we're gonna to go top 50%, Margin top minus. We only have to go one pixel because it's one pixel, two pixels high. So one pixel you probably wouldn't even notice, but we're going to do it because we do things properly around here. <laughs> um, cool. So it's now positioned where we want it. So you can write to transform rotate bracket. 45 degrees. Again, as you can see, that rotated it by 45 degrees, which gets us half of our cross. So I'm going to copy all of that and put it in after. Instead of 45, I'm going to go 135. There we go. So let's save that. Right. Look, I love this one. I think it looks really nice. I may even use a similar design on the actual Octagon website in the next couple of weeks. So I hope you liked it. And please leave your comments yeah, on the YouTube video or on the blog post. 
Um, and if you do it um, and put it somewhere online, please share the link. I'd love to see um, exactly you know, your particular implementation of this. It'd be good to see. Thanks, and I'll, I'll see you next time. One quick final thing that I forgot to mention, um, and it was, became apparent when I viewed the page at the front, is that our X doesn't quite appear centered. Now we've discovered this before that when you're doing something in the Visual Builder you, and you're doing you're working with absolute positioning, things don't always go to plan when you look at the front end. And the way around that is that when you're working with the CSS on the particular module where you've created the absolute um, or whatever the particular HTML element that is positioned absolutely, the parent element has to be positioned relatively. So on the main element there, if we go re position relative, save that, refresh this at the front, solved. Simple as that. Sorry about that one, folks, but I'm glad we figured it out.